Le Pen is dead. Long live Le Pen. Well, no, I, I don't want to act like she's some kind of martyr. I was not a big fan of Marine Le Pen, or Marine Le Pen, however you're supposed to say her name. Um, I, I would prefer her over Macron. Then again, I don't live in France. But from a foreign policy standpoint, I should say, as an American, I would prefer to see Le Pen uh, at the top of the ladder in France uh, rather than Macron. But if Le Pen were to have won, let's say, the share of the votes that Macron did, 58%, and Macron had been the one that won 42% rather than the other way around, which, uh, for those of you who don't know, that is currently the estimated tally. Um, we don't; Those are not hard numbers yet, but the, the general number being thrown around is 58 Macron, 42 Le Pen, which I should point out that is the highest um, that Le Pen has ever received in terms of votes. Uh, she made it to the second round for the first time uh, in the last election against Macron uh, back in 2017. I had to think about that for, for a minute. I'm like, wait, what year are we in? And so it was five years ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was 2017. It was the year after Trump. Because remember, we had Brexit 2015, Trump 2016. And then, you know, the great fear was, oh my gosh, 2017, are we going to have Marine Le Pen, the president of France, will be the end of the world. And then Macron, the savior of Europe, stepped forward and said, you know, I don't believe in anything. Uh, I'm an ex-Rothschild banker, and uh, I'm here to, to just preserve neoliberalism while being, uh, you know, neither left nor right. I'm just, I'm just everybody. Uh, you know, whether you're a, a, a right-wing neoliberal or a left-wing neoliberal, uh, I, I stand with all of you because I am an avatar of the elite class. And that campaign won Macron president back then. He was a unity candidate for the establishment. Uh, and that's what he did again this time. Now, had Le Pen won, would it have really been all that great or all that terrible from the perspective, you know, depending on what your perspective is? Um, I think no, because, I mean, the, the Marine Le Pen of 2022 is clearly not, you know, not the old Le Pen. It's not with, when you hear the name Le Pen, it's not really, um, not really what you would think of. I mean, Le Pen Sr., uh, whatever his name was, I forget, was his name Pierre or something? He had some generic French name. Um, I don't think it was Pierre Le Pen. I'm probably thinking of Trudeau. Uh, but he was a, I wouldn't call him like a full-out Nazi, but I think it was pretty well understood that he was, you know, a fascist of some sort, and that he was not a fan of the Jew, um, Maybe that's slanderous, but I believe he actually, like, was a real, like, you know, no, the Jews are the problem kind of guy. And Front National, which was his party, um, slowly, over time, gained traction, gained some some mainstream support. And then, you know, Maureen, uh, his daughter, took over as the head and promptly kicked her daddy out, kicked him to the curb, said, I completely disavow you. And everything you stand for and this is my party now and she even changed the name to national rally which i mean it's, it's so dumb i mean you know like everybody your name is still le pen people know who you are <laughs> they know that you're still the front national and so when you see stuff like that those are those to me are not smart marketing moves those are little bitch moves i think that le pen um genuinely wants to be respected by ordinary people and so she's done all these things. She's, you know, completely um, renounced and denounced her own father. She hijacked his party, changed the name of his party uh, to try and distance herself from him even more. And uh, she has softened to the point to where, uh, I mean, she can barely be called a Eurosceptic at this point. Um, you know, she's not a... She's not someone who's like directly calling, you know, hey, vote for Le Pen. A vote for Le Pen is a vote for Frexit. Um, you know, far from it. She just kind of is trying to play, I guess, the Orban, uh, uh, the, or the Orban card of, you know, like, hey, you know, we don't like the EU, but here we are, so we're going to work within the EU. And I understand that with a small country like Hungary, but France, eh, no, I don't, I don't have the sympathy for for you doing that because it's not like France is some big or some tiny little. Uh, micro state that could be completely crushed um, by by the EU, uh, like Hungary arguably is. 
France is one of the two leading states in the EU. And so if you're a French politician and you have a problem with the EU, you need to be straightforward about that. And if you're not being straightforward about that, it makes me think, you know, to whatever extent you kind of are equivocating, it makes me think, well, maybe you're not that anti-EU. And that's how it seems to be uh, with Le Pen. And then on top of that, you know, in France, um, there is, you know, there is the genuine disagreement with Le Pen as her policies are, you know, currently, um, uh, currently stated by her. You know, she's changed a lot, but you know, whatever she says, her policies currently are. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of people who disagree with that uh, and what she stands for now. But there are even more people who just vehemently hate her and suffer from Le Pen derangement syndrome. And they hear the name Le Pen, um, and they think of her father, and then they think of her, and they and then they think of Hitler, <laughs> and that's it. And they go, oh my gosh, we must stop this Nazi occupation. Uh, you know, this is uh, uh, Vichy all 2.0. And so all these people within the French deep state, um, if Le Pen somehow was elected president and then somehow decided to enact real change in France, I think that uh, the people within the French deep state would, would look at themselves, if they go along with Le Pen, as collaborators. And, you know, Vichy collaborators, Nazi collaborators, are not people who are remembered well or were well respected in France or the rest of Nazi-occupied Europe. Philippe Pétain, uh, you know, his legacy was completely destroyed. Um, because, you know, he decided to work with the Nazis uh, to try to preserve some of uh, the French people's freedoms, you know, while working with the Nazis to, uh, you know, give the give over to the, the Nazis the people they wanted so that, you know, all of France didn't have to suffer under direct, uh, you know, Nazi military administration. And so, you know, it's like Patan, he's a complicated figure. These people, you know, some a lot of these people who were Nazi collaborators, eh, they were kind of complicated people. But because, uh, you know, because, you know, at the time it was a tough call, um, you know, and you can see their case, how they were trying to do, you know, what they thought was was the, doing the most good for the most amount of people. But well, once the Nazis lost the war, you know, that moral ambiguity goes out the window. And it's like, well, no, these people were always evil. They were pure scum. And Philippe Patan, if he wasn't 95 years old, uh, you know, he, they would have hanged him. And so these people in the French government would not want to be remembered that way themselves if they worked with Le Pen. So they would do everything they can to obstruct her. And honestly, and I don't think the military would revolt against Le Pen. Uh, the French military seems to be, um, uh, you know, relative to the rest of the country, much more right wing than the American military is. You know, the American military uh, is, as we all know, increasingly woke. The French military seems to be uh, to a lesser extent, especially when you consider how much more left wing uh, France is uh, in general compared to the United States. So I don't think Le Pen would have to worry about a military coup, but certainly they would find a way to like impeach her or whatever the term is called uh, in French law. I don't know if they call it impeachment. Um, I don't think you can do a vote of no confidence on a elected president. Of course, you could do that with a prime minister. Um, Le Pen's party, though, would never uh, be able to get, uh, you know, enough. Uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have the prime minister to begin with anyway. So they would just, you know, they would do everything they could to fix things so that Le Pen, even if she were elected, would have no real power. I think that that is uh, the most likely, uh, the most likely path. Well, we won't have to find out now because she didn't win. Uh, she didn't come super close. I don't think that this is a, this isn't a small enough margin to where it could have been stolen. You know, if we came out here and it was like 5149, uh, Macron, I would have thought, eh, you know, that's pretty darn close because that's way closer than anybody would have expected. Um, but this, this was not close. It's obvious that a majority of people in France do not like Le Pen. Um, a majority of people in France also don't like Macron. But there are probably more people who just think that Macron is meh and they prefer somebody else. Uh, but, you know, Le Pen, they hate at a visceral level. They suffer from Le Pen derangement syndrome. And so they will either stay home or actually go out and vote for Macron, who they don't even like, just to avoid a President Le Pen. That is, um, you know, that's the problem for her. 
There's an there's an enthusiasm gap, or maybe I should say like a disenthusiasm gap. I don't know, or I don't know. It's the wrong term, um, because normally you think of an enthusiasm gap as being, you know, something positive. Oh, more, more people love this candidate than love that candidate. But in this case, it's that far more people hate Le Pen than hate Macron, even though, uh, generally speaking, nobody likes Macron. Now, um, Macron's crushing victory may, um, the, on a foreign pol as far as foreign policy is concerned, may embolden the West uh, in its, you know, ongoing fight against Russia. Um, I think I, I saw something that Zero Hedge tweeted out. I forgot. I had forgotten about this. Uh, you know, there have been rumors circulating for the last couple of weeks about the EU um, announcing a total uh, embargo on Russian oil, which of course would make the bad situation in energy markets ten times worse. It, it would be um, catastrophic. They would, you know, they were basically waiting for Macron to win before they announced this because they didn't want to give any extra. Um, support to Le Pen, and obviously uh, Le Pen running as a, running on détente with Russia uh, would appeal quite a bit to people if they knew, you know, hey, my standards of living are about to plummet precipitously uh, if Le Pen, or if Macron stays in office and goes along with these with this EU oil embargo. And moreover, they're just going to hold up, you know, Macron's victory as a, you know, hey, look, you know, because they're looking at it like a proxy war against Russia. Look, the Russian candidate, Le Pen, she lost. And so, look, uh, well, uh, Europe is more united than ever. We all want war in Ukraine to go on forever. So that's about all I have to say about the French election. Um, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.